Have you ever wanted to get fit? Have you ever wanted to become a muscle-bound beef master who can throw weight around like a pissed-off gorilla? scaring away all the hoes within a 30 meter radius of you? Or maybe you want to do the opposite, and attract all those said hoes within a 30 meter radius to your aesthetic as fork neck. Well, unfortunately, I can't help you there because one, my strength is modest at best, and two, I'm afraid of women. But what I hope I can actually help you with is giving you the knowledge to empower yourself to reach your fitness goals, and hopefully dispel any nonsense or bullshit that you may encounter. I'm not gonna try to sell you a cookbook or a secret routine that gets you jacked in 90 days, or teach you how to mew, jelk, and looks max to get pussy, or give you some extended rigmarole that leads me to try to sell you something. I'm just going off what I know in my personal experiences. I will not be 100% correct, and that's okay. My methods have plenty of flaws, and won't have you looking like Arnold. You'll be looking more like Owen Kong. But regardless, I hope this advice is concise, informative, and most importantly entertaining. Part 1. Planning The first thing you need to do on your fitness journey is simple, and that's to define what your fitness goals are. Do you want to lose weight? Gain muscle? Both? Do you want to bulk up to a bloated, grizzly meat man who can bench 500 pounds unassisted? Or do you want to cut you down and turn yourself into a Skyrim Draugr who can bench a modest 150 pounds but looks like a veiny wiener? Whatever it may be, you'll want to figure that out first as all the subsequent fitness moves you make will be dependent on what your fitness goals are. For example, someone looking to gain muscle over loose fat would incorporate much less cardio into their routine. Step number two is to figure out what you're working with. Do you have a gym membership? Can you get one? Do you own any workout equipment? My advice would be to obtain a gym membership if you don't already have one. Gyms are fairly cheap and most memberships cost only around 10 to 15 bucks a month. But unfortunately when you first sign up, you'll probably have to pay some kind of fuck you fee of anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks. Home gyms are nice, and I even used one extensively during the mysterious respiratory virus pandemic. And although being able to walk 20 feet downstairs to go work out instead of having to get in a car and drive 10 minutes to the gym is very cool, very swag, a gym is still the optimal choice. Home gym setups cost a lot of money up front, and at minimum, you're gonna have to buy a bench setup, a barbell, and all the weights you need. And weights on plates are more expensive than you think they'd be. They're around 60 to 100 bucks per plate, worth more than their actual weight in metal. Whereas gyms will have all that equipment times 10, plus specific body part machines that you can use when you want to change things up or have a more specialized routine as well as having around 600 Gorillion cardio machines to choose from. The only thing home gyms have over regular gyms is not having to deal with other people also working out around you. And I get it, if you're new to working out, going to a crowded gym full of lumbering beef lords is very intimidating. But don't worry, I've got you covered. As a former gym pussy, here's what you can do to overcome your anxieties. Disregard everyone in the gym. They're already doing that to you. 95% of the time, the other people in the gym are there for the same reason as you, to get their reps in and go home. The other 5% are people who come in groups and love to meander and socialize as they take over a squat rack for 15 minutes with four guys taking turns squatting above depth. If you're worried that your fellow gym goers may be looking at you or judging you while you're working out, they're very likely not. In fact, it's more likely that your existence hasn't even been registered by them. When you've got the earbuds in and you're pounding out some reps, you start seeing right through people, as if they aren't even there. Besides, gym bros love seeing unhealthy slash fitness noobs start lifting. It's a very inspiring thing to see, and you might get some nice advice. If you need to do an exercise but are blocked from doing it, say you need a bench but all the benches are currently in use, there's no need to ask for how many reps someone has left, as they will be done when they are done and asking them will not affect how quickly they finish. The best option is just to stand there and hover around the exercise machine you want to use. That way you can silently exert your pressure onto them without actually having to speak to them. Now that you have an idea of what you want to do and where you're going to do it, the next step is to figure out how you're going to do it and build a routine for yourself. Having a routine is very important, as without it you'll just be bumbling and unsure what to do at the gym, which results in low gym productivity. Now routines can be extremely varied. They can be cardio dominant, lifting dominant, you can do full body every day, do certain muscles on different days, do 531, 5x5, 5x5 linear, so on. There's a ton of shit you can do. There's also no wrong way to work out. Again, it's all based on what your goals are. What I currently do and have been doing for the last six years or so is a three day loop of a push day, pull day, and legs day. Feel free to use this as a base, especially if your goals are similar to mine. Push day is just chest, shoulders, and triceps day. I do, Bench of three sets, last set is a drop set. Dumbbell overhead press, you can do this with a barbell, but I prefer dumbbells for balance. Tricep push down. Incline dumbbell bench, you can do incline barbell, dumbbells are good for balance. Tricep push down, and then cable arm extension, where it hits the shoulders by taking the cable and extending your arm 90 degrees, but you can switch this out for any other shoulder exercise you'd like. Pull day is back, biceps, and deadlift. First I do deadlift, which is optional. Dumbbell bicep curl, then I do pull ups. Then I do a cable or bar curl, and then I do cable pulls or a pull down for my last. 
And for legs day, I just do barbell squat, focusing on going as deep as I can and doing a drop set at the end. I highly recommend at least doing bench and squat, and deadlift is optional. It's pretty hard to learn as a beginner, and performing a deadlift with bad form can be pretty disastrous. <laughs> you could slip or herniate a disc, or even hurt your spine. If you do it wrong, you're punching a one-way ticket to Snap City. Fortunately, I can't give you a full breakdown on proper form, but in general, make sure you aren't rounding your back. And when squatting, try to go down to the point where your thighs are parallel to the ground. And as a rule of thumb, make sure you're only moving the body parts that the exercise is working out. If you have to activate other body parts to complete a lift, you're probably lifting too heavy. There's people who can give way better form advice all over the internet if you're curious. Gym staff are also usually trainers who can give you form advice as well. Also, in case you didn't know, a rep, short for repetition, is when you perform a lift once, i.e. bring the bar to your chest and then back up if you're doing bench. A set is the number of reps done in a row. If you lifted the bar up, did 5 bench press reps and put the bar back, you did one set of 5 reps. I do 3 sets for pretty much all of my exercises. For reps, I go to failure pretty much every time. That's when you rep it out until you physically cannot complete another rep. Then you rest, then do another set. Sometimes for the last sets of a lift, I'll do a drop set which is when you do a set, lower the weight, then immediately do another set, and repeat two to three times. It's a great way to increase volume when I often max out on my lifts. I can't prove it works, but sure as hell feels like it does. I also do cardio at the end of my workouts, running on the treadmill for around 16 minutes. Cardio may not be required for your goals, but I do highly recommend it for supplementing weight loss slash maintenance, as well as overall health and increased endurance. It works out your heart and lungs, and considering many Americans get packed from heart disease and having lung issues, it's always a good idea to make them as strong as possible. Cardio also increases metabolism, which is the rate at which your body burns energy. The more active you are, the higher your metabolism will likely be. You can run, bike, elliptical, or find more fun ways to get your cardio in, such as taking longer walks or playing a sport or a game. I used to shoot hoops for cardio when I had access to a basketball net, and this is my preferred way to get cardio in. Just be careful though, do a little too much cardio and all your gains will melt away. Gone with the wind. Now this obviously isn't the best or only way to work out. But this is what I've been sticking to for many years, and it seems to be working well for me. And the exercises done in this routine can be changed based on your own personal preferences. For example, I used to incorporate doing front squats on leg day. I found out I hate doing front squats. So I kicked that shit off my program and focused more on my back squat, which I like much better. That's one of the nicer things about routine build crafting. There's a lot more room to experiment and refine your routine to your own goals. If you incorporate an exercise you don't like, get rid of it. And try something else. More difficult doesn't always mean more gains. Part 2. Eating. Now we move on to the unironic hardest part about fitness, diet and food. Starting a fitness journey will also come with a pretty big shakeup to your diet, which depending on your situation can be very difficult to manage, especially if you live with family or others who cook for you. But Papa Kung has been in both food dependent and independent situations, so I'll teach you what I know. Your first diet step is to start keeping track of everything you're putting in your body. Unfortunately, you're going to have to start being a little anal about your diet, as you'll want a picture of everything you ate in a day. This is because weight all comes down to energy in versus energy out. If your body burns around 2,000 calories in a given day, you need to eat around 2,000 calories to maintain your body weight. If you eat more than 2,000 calories, you'll begin to gain weight. If you eat less than 2,000 calories, vice versa. In theory, you could lose weight if you ate nothing but fucking mayonnaise, as long as you ate under 2,000 calories of it. But if you did that, you'd find that your strength would be pretty slow to develop, as mayonnaise is pretty deficient in protein which is where we get into macros. Now macros are a very nuanced and complex topic, and a proper balance of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates are key to maintaining a healthy diet. But we aren't focused on balance, we're focused on getting fucking yoked. So I'll give you fairly simplified, but practical advice. No matter what your fitness goals are, you'll most likely want to have most of your meals be based around a lean protein source, whether that be steak, chicken, pork, turkey, fish, or tofu and beyond meat if you're a democrat. You can eat whatever you like best as long as it's got a good amount of protein in it and is from a natural source. You'll want to try to eat around 1 gram of protein per pound you weigh. So say if you weigh 185 pounds, aim to eat 185 grams of protein a day. It doesn't have to be perfect every day, but do try to aim for that amount. Protein is by far the most important macro for us, as it's what your body uses to repair its cells and fortify them. Muscle building works like this. When you are working out, pushing and pulling all that heavy shit, you're actually tearing your muscles by moving that heavy weight. You then consume a large amount of protein from your hopefully optimally cooked protein-based meal, and the proteins you consume repair those damaged cells. But here's where the magic happens. When you're repairing those cells, the cells are made larger by the repairs, in turn making your muscles larger and stronger. This is known as hypertrophy. The more protein you give your body, the more effective the repairs are and the stronger you'll get, but in turn, you also gain more fat. However, if you give them less protein than normal, the repairs will not be as efficient, and the strength may be lost as a result. 
Your body is a living mirror of your lifestyle. It will reflect what you put in it and what work you do on it. Carbs are important as well. They're a vital source of energy for humans. However, the average American usually eats more carbs than they should, as most of our favorite foods such as pizza, pasta, and sandwiches are carb-based rather than protein-based. Especially that bullshit-ass food pyramid that makes no sense and is based on fucking bread? If you're looking to lose weight, cutting down on your carb intake is an excellent first step. If you're bulking up, you'll definitely want to eat more carbs as they'll supplement your protein intake and give you extra energy to lift heavier in the gym. As for fat, Look, look, look. You should be able to get all the fats you need from the foods you're already eating, such as meats. Try to avoid eating fats from junk sources as much as you can, as they aren't doing any work for you. Also be sure to add any fruits or vegetables you like to further improve your nutrient intake. They're never not good for you. Overall, you want to be more conscious about not only what you're eating, but also the quality of what you're eating. Like I mentioned, this can be difficult if you live with a family who cooks for you, so you may have to ask whoever cooks to make certain meals for you, or make them yourself. But don't be afraid to ask you'll probably find them to be more supportive than not. Some other dieting advice I can give you is to keep track of how many calories you're drinking as well. Alcohol, non-diet sodas, and sugared coffees can run up to 200 calories per bottle. Coffees can be anywhere from 300 to 500. And that shit can really sneak up on you. If you have a couple drinks with some friends down at the, the bloody, bloody strawberry, strawberry, drinking five beers will net you 500 plus calories consumed in liquid alone, on top of whatever you already ate that day. Unfortunately, alcohol consumption is very fitness unfriendly due to its caloric density, so some booze sacrifices may need to be made if you are an avid enjoyer. Try to avoid eating fast food such as McDonald's or Five Guys as much as possible due to high caloric density of fast food, as well as high amounts of saturated fats. If you want food like that, in my experience, places like Chipotle, as in places that offer whole ingredient customizations, are much better for getting your macros taken care of. Also, try to avoid snacking as much as possible. Get most of your food intake from meals. This helps reduce overall food intake, at least for me. Also, drink plenty of water. With that in mind, starting out, just eat as many meals as you normally would for now with your new and improved diet. There's no need to try that new age shit like intermittent fasting or keto or to eat six meals of seared grouper a day on the warrior diet or some other bullshit. You'd only want to do that if you had some sort of deadline to reach a fitness goal, but that's a whole different beast. But for now, eat what you feel is right, keep track of how much you're putting in, and as you go along and get more lifting experience and are more comfortable in your routine, then you can look into raising or lowering your intake based on if you want to build strength or lose fat. The former usually being referred to as a bulk and the latter usually being known as a cut. Many lifters opt for a cycle where they bulk up for half the year, usually in the fall or winter, eating over their maintenance amount, gaining lots of strength and lots of fat and setting new personal best numbers, then cutting down by eating under their maintenance with the goal of shedding as much fat as possible while holding on to as much muscle mass as possible as loss of strength is unfortunately pretty much unavoidable in a caloric deficit, resulting in a weaker but more aesthetically pleasing body. I did this for a few years in college and was able to reach some fairly modest lifts at the height of my bulks, which was pretty much a 325 squat, <laughs> but I saw better cut results when I slowed the cut down to last a year instead of six months. There's no right or wrong time to cut or bulk. Again, it all depends on your goals. There's no need to completely remove drinking or fast food or desserts from your diet entirely. Having a Big Mac for a meal one time or having a few drinks occasionally won't really affect you. Just don't let these things become a staple if your diet is all. Make them the exception, not the rule. Moderation is in fact key like your mom says. Part 3. Doing it. Okay, you've got your gym. You've got your diet prepped and your routine laid out. Now all that's left is to actually do it. And keep doing it. Work out today. Work out tomorrow. Work out the next day. And the next day. And the next day. And the next day. Not the day after that though. That's your rest day. And the next day. So on. You're probably thinking, damn, do I have to do this every day? Well, yeah. The greatest diet and gym aren't anything without the will to do the deed. And the last and arguably most important thing to take care of is your mindset. As I mentioned before, your body is a mirror of your lifestyle. And lifestyle changes are long and drawn out. It'll take several weeks before you start noticing any physical changes, and that could be very demotivating. That's where discipline comes in. Your fitness journey will not be a short stint. Lifting is something you do for a few weeks, have your fun with it, and stop once you bench that 225 pounds. Weeks turn into months, and months will turn into years. And you need to make sure that you're always keeping your eyes on the bigger picture and why you're doing this. The way I like to think about it is that fitness is something that I need to do, not something I just want to do. It's something that's incorporated into my daily schedule, like taking a shower or eating lunch. Make it the rule, not the exception. Your discipline needs to be there for you when your motivation isn't, because unfortunately, motivation will not always be there. He's a fickle dick. And luckily for us, working out helps build our discipline. There have been many times where I'm not motivated to go work out. Maybe I'm feeling too tired from that demon blunt that gave me convulsions last night. Or I'd rather play this game, or finish some work up, or I simply just don't want to go. But I'll still force myself to go. Sometimes just getting to the gym is half the battle. 
but conquering those resistors is incredibly satisfying and only helps to improve your discipline. Avoid going to extremes and overtraining, especially in the beginning. It can burn you out and turn you off to exercise, and overtraining is indeed a real thing. No need to ass blast full body workouts and perform multiple compound lifts each day then run for 45 minutes. That's bull bullshit. Just focus on consistency over all else. Besides, if you're new to lifting, noob gains are also real and you'll get an extra boost to strength gains to start you out. If you keep at it, the results will come. The weights will start feeling lighter. You'll find yourself pushing and pulling heavier weights. Nothing makes the brain happier than seeing number go up after all. Your body will start to change and people will start noticing the work you've been putting in and all this positive feedback will fuel your motivation, which will hopefully keep you in the gym. So now, not only will you be getting stronger, sexier, more confident, you'll also enjoy the added benefits exercise brings in general that are backed up and proven by 4,000 gorillion scientific studies, such as healthy internal organs, your heart's gonna be swole as fuck, boy, and improved dopamine, which is your happy brain sauce, production. That time invested over countless workouts gets paid back to you in health benefits that'll help you throughout your entire life. And if you're like me, eight years of almost complete with a few slips dedication, you too can get that six out of 10 natty body of your dreams. Part four, extras and advice. Those are all the core tenets of fitness covered. Fitness can be broken down into a sort of triforce of diet, exercise, and motivation. And when they all work together, they can do some pretty cash money shit for not only your body, but your overall health and quality of life. Besides those three, there are a few extra topics I can give some advice on. Supplements. I am a supplement soldier. I drink a protein shake almost every morning of every day. They help give me a lightweight protein boost and help blunt some morning hunger because I only eat lunch and dinner. Now supplements should not be your primary protein source. All your macros should come from whole foods, but drinking these shakes seems to have done nothing but help me and I recommend them if you're like me and you prefer to eat less than eat more. You can buy them either pre-made or in powder form to make your own, but I prefer the pre-made shakes because of how easy they are, but they can be pricey. 45 bucks for the brand I use. This shit will probably clog my tubes and kill me by age 50, but god damn they're pretty good. Pre-workout is not required, but it works pretty well if you struggle with tiredness or lethargy when it comes time for you to work out. I'm a caffeine fiend by nature and enjoy taking pre-workout. Sometimes they can give a little strength boost to get that extra rep in, but it's not foolproof. If you want to take pre-workout, there should be no harm in doing it if you're an adult and you know your caffeine limits. Just make sure you don't become dependent on its effects to get through a workout. As for steroids or PEDs, I got nothing for you. I'm natty and I don't plan on taking steroids. Steroids do work extremely well if you value aesthetics over all else and you just want that insane body. But the side effects and need to remain on steroids to maintain that body that will start to degenerate the moment you hop off steroids have kept me away. If you really want to know, go hit up my guy Derek or something. Also, be very skeptical about fitness influencers and their products. A common strategy they do is to hop on steroids and get jacked and then put out a fitness program and supplement line, promising you can get a body like theirs if you just buy their program and eat their all natural supplements. Don't fall for it. Liver King didn't get jacked because he was eating powdered beef liver pills. He got jacked from injecting Winstraw into his ass cheeks. If they make money off their physique, they're probably on something. Getting imbibed while getting fit. Sadly, alcohol and fitness are ops. Alcohol is very calorie dense and leaves you feeling lethargic and sickly if you consume too much of it, which heavily affects gym performance. In college, I'd be trying to work out the day after a party the night before and my head would be feeling like it's full of nothing but air. Now, I would never condone its usage, but Zaza has zero calories in it. Just something to think about. Finally, I'll go over where I'm at. For about a year, I've been doing a sort of body recomposition, which in my case is like a slowed cut, where I'll eat mostly high protein foods at a slight instead of a more drastic caloric deficit. That way I could slowly shed fat while holding onto as much muscle as possible. This is giving me my best aesthetic results yet, although I do not recommend it to everyone, as my lifts have mostly plateaued, hanging around the same weight and rep level for months, which can be very demotivating to go and hit the same weights and reps day in and day out. But it works for me because it's the body type I'm satisfied with for now, which keeps me motivated. And I think that about covers everything. Let me know your thoughts in the comments along with any other questions I could possibly have answers for. And thank you for watching, my sweet baboos.